Well, South Africa is known to be the cradle of humankind. It's now emerged that our direct human ancestor discovered northwest of Johannesburg is much older than we thought. The Homo erectus skull cap is more than two million years old. Let's get more on this with Stephanie Baker from the University of Johannesburg's Paleo Research Institute. I should imagine that this is a, a pretty exciting discovery for all of us. Good morning. It definitely is. It's quite, quite exciting for, for South Africans and for the species as a whole. Tell us why. So Homo erectus is the species that leads directly to you and I. So that's why it becomes so important and so critical for us, because I think we, we're quite speciest. We like those that lead specifically to you and I. But Homo erectus is also quite important because it's the one that left Africa. So it's the reason that we as modern humans have dominated the rest of the landscape. Mm. And how does it differ from, from what we've known up until now? I mean, what other telltale signs other than it leaving Africa? So what we've known about Homo erectus is that not only is it much taller um, than most of the other species that were on the landscape at the time, but we also know that up until this find here in South Africa, it was mostly in, in its oldest forms being found in Europe and the borders of Asia, so in areas like Georgia. So that's quite unusual that kind of 200,000 years earlier, we're seeing it in Africa and all the way down south in Africa. Typically, most Homo erectus specimens are coming from East Africa in areas like Ethiopia. So to find it all the way down south really changes the narrative of how it moved through space, and especially in such a quick time period. For 200,000 years to go from all the way down south here by you and I, all the way up to Asia and Georgia is quite a feat. And what do you put that speed down to and what else have you learned from it, the sort of lifestyle it would have led? So we know that one of the things we can really say about Homo erectus and that becomes characteristic of you and I as, as a genus is adaptability. Homo erectus is unusual because it is so adaptive. Most of the other species that we see on the landscape at the same time at this 2 million mark is things like Paranthropus robustus, which is another species that Dreamulin is quite famous for, and Australopithecus, things like Sediba, the newly discovered species. These are very uh, niche specific, so they're eating very specific things and they're using very specific parts of the landscape. Homo erectus doesn't do that. They use everything and they use it well. So it means that they can move from different landscapes, forests to, to grasslands to wetlands, and they can capitalize on all available food resources. Another thing we can tell about the species by this time period is that we can tell they're quite social. So that's that? another thing that's more characteristic of you and I, right? We know that they're moving in slightly larger population numbers mm -hmm. and that cognitive capability, their brain um, capacity is increasing. And it's increasing for a number of reasons, but one of the clear ones is its ability to work as a team in a sense. So now it's it's a group of these, these hominins running around the landscape, uh, intimidating big cats, so to speak, and, and out competing all these other hominins that are too specialized to adapt. It sounds like the uber species. How did you make this discovery? What happened? It was quite exciting. So we run annual field schools every year. And on one of these field schools that was being run in combination with an Australian university, La Trobe, we had a student who was excavating in an area and some baboon teeth had come out. And we thought initially that was what this was. And these skull pieces started coming. And we were looking at them and most of us were going, oh, it's just a baboon. Don't worry about it, it's just a baboon. Mm -hmm. uh, but I then, uh, one of the things I do on site uh, as, as the director is I typically don't get to excavate anymore, which is quite unfortunate. But uh, I do get to play with million year old jigsaw puzzles. Mm. So I get these little fragments and I sat piecing them together to rebuild and refit them. And over time, it became increasingly clear that we weren't dealing with a baboon. The plates of the skull are too thin. Uh, and also the shape, the overall shape didn't make much sense. Baboons, despite their very big heads, tend to have very small brains. Uh, and whereas you and I have very big brains, right? Um, for what it's so. worth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and this, this shape, this teardrop shape that started to form was abundantly clear that we were dealing with a hominin. So the next step then was, well, which one?
Okay, Stephanie we Baker, we're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately. But congratulations. Sure. What an exciting find. Still to come.